Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to the uh, Planning and Land Use Standing Committee meeting of October 4th, October 4th. We have a new agenda before us, a white face plate, uh, which just has an additional late item uh, with regard to item number three. So, first we'll look for uh, approval of the agenda as uh, revised. So, yes, thank you, Councillor Ellis. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. We have two proposed consent agenda items the adoption of the minutes from September 20th, as well as item number five, the heritage designation for 3140 Alfred Avenue. That meets with the committee's approval for a uh, proposal to adopt the consent agenda. Thank you, Councillor Matt. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. So let's move on to item number two, the decision request for. Um, rezoning application 361 and development permit application 281 for 21 and 25 Ontario Street. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I believe we would like a presentation. Okay. Thank you. Please proceed. This item relates to a rezoning application and a development permit for the properties at 21 and 25 Ontario Street in the James Bay neighbourhood. The site is currently occupied by two single detached dwellings. The proposal would involve the demolition of those existing dwellings and the construction of nine townhouses. The main photograph here shows the two existing single detached dwellings, with the photographs below showing the site in the context of the streetscape. An existing townhouse development that fronts Ontario Street, Dallas Road, and Simcoe Street abuts the site to the west. On the opposite side of Ontario Street, the application faces the reef and the rear of existing commercial properties. The site layout <laughs> indicates that four of the townhouses would front Ontario Street, with the other five located to the rear of the site. The four units on Ontario Street would be provided in the form of a two-story building, with those to the rear being three stories in height. All of the units would have integral private garages that would be accessed from Ontario Street via a shared driveway. A separate pedestrian entrance and footpath would be provided to the east of the site, directly from Ontario Street. Off Street bicycle parking would be provided in the vicinity of this footpath and adjacent to the guest parking space. The proposed buildings are shown to be of a contemporary design with flat roofs each unit would have its own individual access, and building entrances on Ontario Street provide direct access to the public sidewalk. This slide shows the elevations of the units fronting Ontario Street. And this slide shows the elevations of the proposed three-story units. The building to the rear would be nine meters in height. However, as indicated in this cross-section, the site grade slopes from front to rear and as such, this building would not appear taller than the building proposed on the site frontage, which in comparison to it is in height. The rezoning application proposes a new zone to allow for the specific townhouse design and layout. From a policy perspective, the James Bay Neighbourhood Plan identifies the application site for potential rezoning from an R2 zone, two family dwelling district, to RK zone, medium attached dwelling district which would allow for attached dwellings and buildings up to 8.5 metres in height, with an FSR of 0.6 to 1. In this instance, the density proposed is 0.84 to 1 FSR, and the three-storey townhouse units would be 9 metres in height. However, the OCP indicates that ground-oriented detached buildings with an FSR up to approximately 1 to 1 may be suitable in traditional residential urban place designation in which this application is situated, and it may be appropriate to allow buildings up to three storeys in certain locations. In light of site context, it is considered that there is policy support for a high density residential development in the form of townhouses in a specific location. While the application does not propose an RK zone as suggested in the neighbourhood plan, the OCP does contemplate high density development in the traditional residential context. From a design perspective, the use of a more contemporary building design is visible in a number of recent developments in the immediate vicinity, such as the townhouse development that is taking place on the adjacent side to the west, a three-story townhouse development on the nearby Simcoe Street, and at the reef. 
the materials, uh, colors and uh, template, template here. It is uh, considered that the use of materials and colors proposed will provide visual interest and contrast within the streetscape. To address the transition between the proposed development and the existing residential properties to the rear of the site, the applicant has set primary windows on the third floor back from the building face and indicated that those windows would be partially obscured layers. The cross section on this slide has been provided by the applicant to demonstrate that direct overlooking of the neighboring properties from the third floor would not occur. It is noted that the application also proposes a rear building setback of four meters, which is consistent with the RKS. The proposed rezoning application is considered consistent with city policy and the development permit application is consistent with compliance with applicable design guidelines. Staff recommend that the application proceeds in accordance with the recommendations outlined in this report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Henning. Questions from the members? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I do have, I suppose, a number of questions for making this kind of um, decision where um, there is a degree of, of support in the official community plan, but the language is very clear that it may be appropriate, uh, not that it is or will be appropriate. And so what I'm trying to understand was uh, the section of why and what are the circumstances that make this appropriate in terms of um, going from the RK zone, which would have allowed four units, to a new zone that would allow up to nine units. When we look at the context, the very significant development on the immigration site to the west is two stories. Um, the property directly behind it, which was redeveloped in 1994, is also a, a two-story duplex. And I'm trying to understand what are the exceptional circumstances that would uh, allow for this kind of consideration. And further to that, how much further into the neighborhood could we expect this kind of consideration to be um, to be supported? My understanding as we move into the neighborhood plan updates was that we have said uh, over and over from council's point of view that we're not anticipating major changes in the neighborhoods. We're looking to densify in the villages. And so this is a village. The context beyond the spine of Dallas Road is actually dropping down in size with the two-story developments right next door. And I think from uh, a neighborhood point of view, I've always said that predictability is very important if we're expecting people to invest in the neighborhood, both in existing properties and new. And if something like this can come, come along that would not have been um, anticipated by anyone, regardless of how much homework that they've done as an adjacent neighbor, how much further can we expect this to happen in the neighborhood? And again, the may be appropriate is what I'm trying to understand, so that would be my, my first rather long-winded question. What, what I'll do is just to answer this question for, for a reference point, if you don't mind. I'm just going to um, flick back to um, the aerial photograph. And in terms of um, deviation from the, the RK zone, uh, which is identified as being an appropriate uh, zone in the neighborhood plan uh, for a rezoning for the site, we looked at it in terms of both a, a, a policy context and from uh, an actual context on site. Uh, what we have obviously is we have the reef across the road here, which is uh, six stories and obviously high density uh, development. This, these two units here, apologies for my shaky hand here. <laughs> these units here and this site here are actually designated um, in the OCP as urban residential, um, which contemplates densities of um, 1.2 to 1, up to 2 to 1, where um, applications are seen to meet the key objectives of the, of the official community plan. You have a site just down here, which is actually zoned RSL, um, that's a um, multi-dwelling district, which in theory would allow density of up to 1.6 to 1 uh, FSR and 18.5 uh, meters in height in terms of building height. Um, we have actually a high density site here where there are two units, tandem development. Um, actually high density in here as well, where you have units which don't front some coast street but run perpendicular to it. Uh, and then another uh, townhouse development here which runs up to three stories in height. 
uh, and a density of 2 to 1 is actually low on this site as well. So in terms of um, future projections from a policy perspective, but also uh, what we see on site there, we looked at the, both of those contextual issues and thought that, well, the 0.84 and uh, three stories that are proposed on this particular site, um, there is policy justification for it, it is appropriate in its context. Um, I'd also say that the RK zone does actually allow for um, three-storey buildings, albeit it sets a height of 8.5, and the, the rear units on the site due to grading issues go up to 9 years, obviously a 0.5 height difference. Yeah, well, yes, I suppose in terms of planning to, to be comparing the redeveloped sites on Dallas Road with their potential redevelopment, to me, those are brand new buildings and they're not going anywhere anywhere soon, yet we're predicting greater density on those sites at some time in the future versus what was there. I remember the ones directly to the west, they were actually developed um, according to the existing land use entitlement, and so did not require the kind of rezoning process that we'd expect. So well, that brings me to the issue of, um, again, the policy says that the, the height up to 8.5 is supportable. Um, there was a request on the part of staff for the third story to be reconsidered on the, the rear townhouses with a 60% um, setback. I'm assuming to try to minimize the impact on the adjacent neighbors, recognizing that the setback for RK, their rear yard is actually less than what the R2 setback would be. Now I understand that the applicant has not shown any appetite for doing that, but again, from staff's point of view, it seems to be attempting to mitigate an impact that is seen as not appropriate. And so that's one of my concerns if there hasn't been any interest on the part of the applicant to, to revisit that, uh, that aspect. The other uh, question in terms of um, the authority of, of future council should this application be approved, is that the overlook issue was dealt with rather than actually set back that uh, third floor was obscured glazing. And what would the authority of council be if, for example, those windows were replaced with clear glazing in the future? So in, in terms of um, exemptions from requiring development permit or a minor development permit, so this is this site would fall into, into development permit area 16. Mm -hmm. And um, repairs and replacement of building materials, which are on a like-for-like -like basis, would not require uh, consent. So if they were taking out clear glazing, uh, obscure glazing, replacing it with clear glazing, that is not on a like-for-like -like basis. So as a minimum, we would be looking at a minor development permit for that. So there would be some, some degree of control uh, in securing that, uh, that obscure, level of obscure glazing in the future. Thank you, and that would be if they chose to go through the city process, otherwise it would be a complaint based on expense as well. Um, I suppose when I look at this, my concern is always the stability of neighborhoods and the predictability of, of development. So this isn't a question for staff, it's far more about a political question. And when I look at something like this, what I'm wondering is what is the message that it's sending to the rest of the neighborhood? And if the message that it's sending is that your current home is basically obsolete and we're going to be approving development around you that you will perhaps not see as compatible or supportive of um, the existing buildings. I think clearly the ones on Ontario Street we know they're going to redevelop more likely in St. Lawrence, but well, we've already seen a significant development with uh, major redevelopments as we have on the uh, site directly to the west and the properties directly uh, directly behind the proposed site as well. I just wonder if we're going to start sending a message that you know, even buildings that are as new as 1994 are uh, going to be seen as somewhat threatened in terms of the environment that they'll find themselves in. Uh, I think in particular because of the, that we're out of sync with the OCP and the neighborhood plan that we take on even more responsibility as we perhaps consider changes that will have a, a very dramatic effect on the neighborhood particularly in this area where there has been so much um, new development and density. Dallas Road is an area that we're trying very hard to mitigate the impacts of cruise ships and all of those things. And so as you move a little further into the neighborhood, what is the expectation in terms of a reasonable amount, even of privacy or green space as well? So the, the rear yard setback, the, the height of the building. And again, I think no matter um, how judicious someone was in terms of the research that they would have done in terms of trying to understand what potential neighborhood changes they might anticipate. I 
I think you might have anticipated four or five new units in some form on that site. I don't think anyone would really have anticipated nine units configured the way that they are. So those are the, uh, some of the concerns that I have. With it. <coughs> I know that we are, uh, as a, a council, it's often been stated that we're looking to densify the city. To me, it's how we do it. And if you can uh, double or even uh, greater than that achieve within a predictable land use policy, I think that's something that uh, is, is, could be seen as reasonable. Um, to go up to um, nine units, I just wonder if, if that is the kind of um, land use planning that we would see as providing a, a positive message to communities as they develop in their own uh, particular way. Thank you. Thank you. That's helps. Yeah, I'm, I'm compelled by what Councillor Madoff says about the predictability and wanting stability in your neighborhood, so thank you for that um, that comment. I actually have a question following up on one of the questions that Councillor Madoff asked. So is it is it true, or is my understanding correct, that the sites that you pointed to with your pointer around there, although the buildings aren't, the, the current buildings uh, are what they are, but the OCP proposes greater density for all of the surrounding sites, is that right? I mean, the ones you pointed to with your pointer. That's, that's generally correct, yes. So it's in, on some sites, like the townhouse uh, development immediately to the west, um, the, the zoning reflects um, what you actually see on site. Mm -hmm. um, but the OCP anticipates, um, as an urban, urban residential zone, that oh, sorry, it contemplates a high density on site should somebody wish to come and rezone. So if someone was going to buy a property in that block, they would look at the OCP and they would say, oh, there's this is slated for higher density. Maybe if I want to buy the single family dwelling, that might not be a good idea because density is uh, is anticipated. I'm just trying to understand, because I'm, we do want people to purchase properties and move into areas where they can anticipate to some degree what's going to happen, although that's you know not always possible. But I just want to understand the policy context. I think that the, the distinction that Councillor Madoff made regarding the word may is important. So, and, and Mr. Handy's use of the word contemplate, um, and your use of the word anticipate. Um, the one word that I think is maybe um, more direct than one could surmise from the policy is slated. Uh, I think this says there is the potential for this to be considered, but uh, it will be considered in the manner that you were presently presented with it as a rezoning and as a balancing between given all of these factors. <coughs> Uh, in terms of policy in the site-specific circumstances, um, is this the appropriate solution? Uh, is there another solution, uh, which uh, Councilor Madoff alluded to this discussion of, are there some things um, embedded within the zone that Council would feel um, that rule is, is too much, but we could see our mind, we could see our ways clear to um, some other rule if the developer were willing to comply with that rule. So it is a much more nuanced discussion, a discussion that you are now being faced with. Mm -hmm. And the policy creates the potential for it to um, occur uh, within policy, but not the right. And I think that's the, the, the real issue that you're now going to be grappling with. Thank you, that's really helpful. Uh, just a couple more comments then. I, I uh, also feel uh, and hear the concerns of the neighbors, both as they're expressed in our package and uh, in emails that we received about the rear yard setback and the feeling of a big wall facing, uh, facing your property. At the same time, I appreciate the um, sensitivity uh, in other ways that the developer has showed, and particularly odd things in my mind, like the kitchen windows at the height of your stomach. So you're actually not looking at a kitchen window, but rather the light comes in over your dishes. Uh, again, to, to mitigate um, the privacy issue. So while the building itself, the footprint might not be um, desirable to, to some, I think that there have been attempts in other ways. So I'm inclined to move this forward uh, for public hearing and then to give us an opportunity as a council to hear what the public has to say. Um, but I'll, yeah, that's that's it for me for now. I'm aware that, uh, although we're having a very informative conversation that we don't actually have a recommendation on the table, it's done trouble with it terribly. 
Um, but I, I really appreciate the comments of uh, both my colleagues because I think this is a, a particularly unique presentation that everything that has been said I think is salient. And, uh, it's a very difficult way uh, of both the present and the future. And I was particularly interested in uh, Director Day's comments around the very nuanced distinction in some of these words. If I follow up and think through Councillor Help's comments about uh, <coughs> potential future violence in neighborhood, uh, neighborhood laws, I guess a lesson from this for not just this particular application at all is that future purchasers really do need to take the time to look at the official community plan and see what is in fact either anticipated or confident or whatever word you'd like to use. Because I think now that we've finally approved that plan, it really is now being seen as a window to the future. And uh, perhaps it indicates the maximum capacity for a particular lot, not necessarily what is automatically to be there. But certainly, I think it would be wise uh, for potential purposes to look at it and see what is the maximum capacity that could actually be there at some point in the future. So, I would look for, um, uh, I'm by the piece of activists and Lord, no one else would like to, but. Yeah, uh, um, I'm willing to put the recommendation on the table. So, Councillor Hobbs uh, put the recommendation as proposed, uh, which you'll see essentially as it goes forward to public hearing for further discussion uh, with a variety of uh, requirements. Um, further comments? Yes, Councillor. Yes, um, just very briefly, I, I, I certainly understand the responsibility for uh, either current residents or future residents to do their homework, uh, in particular to bring themselves up to speed with the official community plan, although I think generally people turn to the neighborhood plan before they turn to the official community plan. Um, and I think that even the most informed uh, resident looking to the West recognizing that there's a potential for greater density on that site, we certainly think not within their lifetime. That's a new development. And so I think you would do with that at least a 50-year window where that, that is going to stay there, if not further. I'd like to think the residents would be able to take bought buildings that were uh, extremely expensive, that they have a lifespan of something more than 50 years. So I, I don't think it's a lack of doing homework in terms of trying to understand what potentially might occur in the, in the neighborhood. Uh, I'm not able to support it moving to public hearing. I might have been persuaded had I felt that there was some um, movement on the part of the applicant to consider the uh, issues that have been brought up in a, in a, in a very detailed and respectful way on, uh, on the part of the adjacent residents, and also by our staff. And that unwillingness to do that, it, um, it concerns me that it might take you know, the heavy hand of counsel to persuade some of them to do something that I said is the right thing to do, and I'm sure that our planning staff had significant conversations about that. So it doesn't make me feel particularly optimistic about what might be able to achieve if it moves forward and I'm anticipating what we're seeing is what we can get to the forward to a public hearing. So as I say, I can see doubling the density on that site, I can see almost tripling the density on that site, but it's how it's achieved um, that, that concerns me and for that reason I'm hoping to support the motion today. Thank you, Councilor Council, any final comments? Well, you know, I'm very compelled by what Councillor Madoff says about it, the <laughs> if there are other ways to achieve that density. But we have plans in front of us, and uh, there are. Uh, my mind is still open as it needs to be until the end of the public hearing. So I think I'm happy to move it forward and keep an open mind and um, and see what uh, see what happens. Well, I'm going to then ask for us to vote on this. We had a good conversation, a good discussion. So, all those in favor of moving forward with public hearing? Me too. Opposed? Council Mouse opposed. We go on to item number three. Item number three is a development permit insurance application for 655. Mr. Kennedy, would we like a presentation on this one as well? I would. Yes, okay. Please, please go ahead, Mr. Kennedy. This development permit proposes a vehicle parking variance resulting from the change of use of the Queen Victoria Hotel in 655 Douglas Street to 146 market rental dwelling units. The site the site is located between Douglas and Blanchard Streets, with a Crystal Court Motel to the site to the north and landmark residential complex immediately to the south. No notable alterations are proposed to the existing building, existing landscaping, or the site in general. 
Other than the provision of internal secure bike storage for residents and the installation of a new bike rack at the entrance to the building. This slide shows the main floor parkade, a new internal bike storage area, which is shown uh, as the grey area in the centre of this floor plan, and the new bicycle rack at the building entrance. This slide shows the basement floor of the parkade and additional bike storage facilities that will be provided, again, those grayed out areas. The application proposes 68 off-street parking stalls, six of which would be dedicated visitor parking stalls. The zoning regulation bylaw requires that 102 off-street parking stalls are provided in association with the proposed residential use, 10 of which should be provided for visitors. In support of the proposed variances, the applicant has submitted a parking demand study prepared by Bunton Associates and confirmed that they are willing to enter into an agreement with the Victoria Car Share Co-op to provide two car share vehicles adjacent to the site. Staff reviewed the proposal and the parking demand study, anticipated that the proposed development would generate demand for 84 stalls, provided transportation demand management measures were implemented. It was noted that any reduction in off street parking at this location may impact on street parking availability in the vicinity. However, the applicant cannot provide additional parking given this is an existing building and there is no further site area to provide for off street parking. Furthermore, from a policy perspective, the downtown core area plan supports a reduction in the number of required vehicle parking stalls for trans <coughs> transit supportive uses located adjacent to major transit stops and along the Douglas Street Rapid Transit Network, as seen in the overhead, which is an excerpt from the downtown core area plan. The application site is situated in close proximity to both a potential transit exchange location and the Douglas Street Rapid Transit Corridor. Therefore, as outlined in the staff report, the reduction in parking at this location is considered consistent with the goals and objectives of the OCP and policies within the downtown core area plan. Given this policy framework and the site-specific content, the context of the application site, staff recommends that the variance be approved, conditional on the terms of a car share program and the provision of two dedicated on-site car share parking stalls. Staff recommend that the application proceeds in accordance with the recommendations that have been report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Comments from the Questions? For the recommendation on the floor? I'm sure I'll put the recommendation on the floor. Okay, thank you, Pastor Phelps. Any comments or questions? No? Great. All those in favor? None opposed? Thank you very much for that. We're going to move forward. Yes, I need to recuse myself. I lived in this house for five years and am contemplating purchasing a condo should this development move forward. Thank you very much. And so this is a development permit application number 282 for 